Seth Moss' background as a college basketball player, youth pastor, and high school basketball coach has prepared him for his God-given destiny and inspired to act by the alarming school dropout rates, drug use, and uh, other really just problems in our school systems. Seth co-founded Five Star Life, a ministry that's focused on reaching students that statistically slip through the cracks. Good to have you with us today, sir. Again. Thanks for having me on. Lots Good to be been here. happening since the last time that you uh, were on to share about Five Star, but uh, just to kind of go back a bit, uh, in a nutshell, tell us a little bit about Five Star Life and its its mission and its purpose. Sure. Well, you know, I always start by talking about why you know why start another nonprofit. There's so many of them, so many mm -hmm. youth service serving agencies. Mm -hmm. But it started with the dropout rate. Seven thousand students drop out of school every single school day in America. Seven thousand. Wow. A, a visual of that. I was to give a visual. Put a student in a school desk, step one on top of another. You'd reach the height of the Empire State Building. Mm. Now do that twelve times. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening every day in America day. Wow. with students dropping out. So we wanted to target that. We started talking to high school principals, looked at all the data, and it pointed to students were slipping through the cracks mm -hmm. after school in the, in the ages of middle school. They might drop out their freshman or sophomore year, mm -hmm. but all the high school principals would say the dropout bubble happens, really, they check out in middle school. Right, they drop that's out where it starts. School. Wow, wow. And, and between the hours, I'd imagine between 3 o'clock and 6 p.m., is um, that's where kids are left alone, unsupervised, because their parents are at work. So what are you doing to get them before they get to high school to stop them, from, you know, to stop that dropout? Rate? Sure. I mean, yeah, middle school is when they form their own uh, relationships, mm -hmm. poor study habits. They start to lose hope in their own educational process. And, and then that le leads to drop up. But we reach them. We start with after school programs because that's where kids are slipping through the cracks. And we'd bring in, you know, mentors, coaches we, that would work with students. We had a, you know, a, a real focus on academics. So we'd say, this is where you are academically, uh, the first week of the program. Where do you want to be in six or eight weeks? And have them set goals. As a result, 70% of our students raise their GPA or maintain a 3 point wow. or above. Mm -hmm. So we're getting it done there. And then we have a character curriculum that has just taken off that mm -hmm. is not just keeping them off the streets or keeping them in, in activities, but giving them a map to, how do I make decisions? How do I live a five-star life, my best life? Mm -hmm. uh, the name, five-star, what's the significance there? You know, it's the best of the best. I mean, ultimately, you know, okay. we, we so want students like to, to Three-star, four-star, five-star. You got five-star. Five star. Five star. Star. So yeah. every student, when you look at, talk to any teacher, just about any district across this nation, which I do a lot, we're growing, expanding very quickly. We've actually gone from about... Uh, you know, 3,000 students that we reached the last time I was on the show to mm -hmm. 10,000 in the last wow. 18 months mm -hmm. uh, because of a video curriculum program that actually we're taking into the school day part of the, of, of, of the program. Mm -hmm. So we train teachers, they implement the program, and as a result, discipline issues are, are, are going away. A, a desire to learn. There's a huge disconnect in students' minds between why do I have to learn this, why am I here, how is this going to matter later on? So this really goes to uh, some essential elements of, of humanity and who we are as, as, as individuals and as, as people. Uh, are there any particular triggers that you've okay. discovered that can, can, can kind of break through uh, the noise, break through the fog, break through some of the things that these kids are experiencing in their lives that gives them that aha moment to say, okay, I can make decisions in my life that... I don't have to let my environment control me. Well, you think about, I mean, th our, our target market is fifth grade all the way through 10th, 11th, 12th grade. The, it, huge transitions, you know, biologically, relationally, educationally. And, and our students are being faced with, think about the internet. Think about social mm -hmm. media. Think about all the peer pressure. Think about the political, you know, the things that are, that are out there. Racism, gender identity. The, the biggest trigger is they're trying to figure out who they are. Mm -hmm. What do they stand for? And do I have value? And does my life matter? And they're being, you know, hit from every angle. And the message is, you're really insignificant. You're just a number. You're just a statistic. You're, you're, you're this, you're that. And we're saying, no, listen, you can live a five-star life. Mm -hmm. Your life matters. And guess what? Your future success is contingent on one thing, your effort, mm -hmm. your drive what you do with it, taking responsibility. It's one of our five core values. Mm. You know, Seth, I used to be a teacher, and whenever I taught at-risk students, and whenever I ran into someone who could help my students, I would just, you know, please, please, come along, help my students so that they can graduate. I'd imagine you have teachers coming to you saying, please, here's a student. I've identified this person. 
Um, is that something, so do you work hand in hand with the teachers as well? Yeah, so again, we have two, two kind of flagship programs. One is after school, working with middle school students. Mm -hmm. right. And we work very closely with social workers, teachers okay. that recommend students for our programs. And then the other program is this video curriculum that sc entire schools are implementing during the school day in their classrooms where they're walking through these things. So yes, teachers actually go through, the whole school goes through training mm -hmm. on how to, how to coach students. They really become life coaches in the classrooms. Mm. Uh, you know, scripture tells us to be as uh, wise as serpents and innocent as doves. And Five Star Life is a faith-based ministry, uh, but you're working in the public school sector and the big, you know, wall uh, that, that, you know, that we, say is there between church and state. How does that integrate? How do you integrate some of the core values and the core components of faith uh, in that kind of a, uh, a ministry place? Sure, I, I always say this, when I was a youth pastor, I really was not aware of what was happening in public education. And, and, and I'm almost embarrassed to say this, I really didn't care. That was the world, and I think sometimes the church lives yeah. there. Mm -hmm. They're unaware and they almost don't care. Yeah. And so for me, as we started Five Star Life and I came across all these statistics, all this data, I started to care. And, and instead of going in and almost having this proselytization mentality, mm -hmm. um, I went in with this Jesus mentality, servant, servant, servant. leadership. Yeah. Let's, what can we do to help? And as a result, there's a lot of ministry opportunities that open up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know you must have quite a few success stories. So tell us a few of them. Oh, gosh. Um, just last night, I was with a student who, uh, gosh, he's a junior in high school. He's on honor roll. He's on this tennis team. But he moved here out of Chicago, and his mom was simply trying to get him out of what they've all, I mean, mm -hmm. generations of poverty, of gangs, of the south side of Chicago, murder capital of the world, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, we've got to get out. They ended up moving to Elkhart. First week of school, he enrolls in a new school, and guess what? He gets suspended, gets into a fight. And so that followed him. She reached out to the school staff and they said, your son needs five star. Well, they tried to sign him up, but there's a waiting list. There's actually a demand for our program and he didn't get in. And we found a way to get him in. And he went from like a 1.2 GPA mm -hmm. to a 3.0 GPA. You know, he, he's just leveled out and he's doing incredible things. That's one of thousands of stories mm -hmm. where students start to come alive because it, the, the ball is in their court. And you mentioned uh, you've gone from about 3,000 kids to five star now helping 10,000 children. Uh, you're starting to spread out to, to other states. So there's a, a big uh, growth curve that, that the organization, the ministry is going through. Uh, how can people get engaged, involved, and, and uh, kind of see the value and get behind what five star is doing? Yeah, that's a great question. And probably three years ago, I would have said, pray for us, you know, <laughs> you know, send a donation, that, that type of thing. But now we have the scalable model where they can bring Five Star to their school. It's a video curriculum program that they can spread across their whole district. And it's very reasonable. It's very affordable. And the impact is significant. So mm -hmm. go to fivestarlife.org. You can learn more about all of our programs. You can volunteer. You can donate. You can bring Five Star to your school. Wonderful, wonderful. We want to thank you so much for being with us today on Harvest. Seth Mouse, co-founder of Five Star Life, and to connect with Seth and this great ministry that really is changing the lives of thousands of students each and every day. Maybe bring it to your community, your school district as well. You can go to fivestarlife.org or go to our website, harvest-tv.com. you find an easy way to link back to Five Star. Coming up later, your prayer request, but up next, something we've been waiting for. We're going to hear from Brian Bush with the latest on Israeli reactions to the U.S. presidential election. We'll be right back.